don't know why I look like I'm so far away in the, in the screen here, but uh, bear with me. Uh, looks kind of weird. I'm kind of bugged out by it. Uh, today I got a 2002 F-150 that has no problems with the 4x4. So why am I doing a video on it? Well, I've been getting a lot of questions about it. Uh, how the system works, how to diagnose it, and we're going to go into it in detail. And we're going to concentrate on the front axle not uh, connecting up there. There's actual disconnect up there, a little vacuum actuator. And we're going to concentrate on making sure it activates and deactivates properly and how the system actually works. Whereas the transfer case shift motor underneath me here in the transfer case, yeah, they fail, but they usually set codes uh, for them. And also you won't hear that... <clears throat> you know, that actual connection when it actually engages, you'll know that that transfer case shift motor is not working. Uh, whereas this, this uh, front axle engagement system, it's silent and it really doesn't say any DTCs, nothing like that. Uh, so we're going to concentrate on that. I'm getting a lot of questions about it, you know, winter's coming up, uh, stuff like that. And I did the same video, vacuum and electrical, uh, for front axle connection on the 2004 to 2000 well, to the current model year, 2014, uh, trucks, they all use the same system, and that video covers all that, but I kind of let you left you guys uh, out of the, you know, out in the wind, I guess you could say, for 97 through 2004 Heritage vehicles, it's all the same. So if you're having a problem with your 4x4, uh, follow along, and I'll show you how it works, and then I'll show you how to test each one of the inputs on here uh, so we can see where the fault lies. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is I'm going to let you listen to all the sounds of the relays and how the dash indicators look uh, when it goes into 4x4 and it goes back into two-wheel drive so you can have reference of what you should be seeing once you turn the switch. Alright, so we got the key on. We are in two-wheel drive. You can see it right there, okay. Now the engine's off, it doesn't matter. And we're going to listen for it once I switch it in. I'm going to switch it into 4x4 now. And there should be relay clicking over here in the dash, in the gem module. And then you hear the actual shift motor underneath you make a sound of sorts. And we'll listen to it now. So we have the clicking in the dash here. And then underneath the vehicle you can hear uh, the shift motor moving. Go back to two-wheel drive. and you'll hear the clicking of the transfer case shift motor underneath and then of course the dash indicator goes out and you hear relay clicking in the dash so those are the three indicators that it is working or not working uh, without actually pulling codes on the system alright so before we get too deep into it in the engine compartment and under the vehicle and we're looking at all this stuff and testing all these things I want to show you the whole complete system here, electrical and vacuum, to make that front axle lock and engage together. And we're going to start from the top here with fuse 23. It's a 10 amp here, and it's in the central junction box down by your feet in the driver's side. And it has power only when your ignition is in the run position. At that point, it's going to provide 12 volts constantly out to each one of the solenoids on the firewall that I'll be showing you here in a second. And then depending on if you want four-wheel drive or two-wheel drive, it'll get a switch ground from the gem module here out, which will internally pull a solenoid and a valve inside of here to allow the vacuum to flow to the front actuator. And the way it gets vacuum is from the engine, obviously. It comes in through a check valve, and then it goes into a supply line here, and it'll go to that vacuum reservoir behind the battery that uh, is prone to cracking and losing vacuum and causing all kinds of uh, control issues with anything that works off a of vacuum. So it's a good place to check. I'll go over that in the video also here. And that so that provides constant uh, working vacuum out to the solenoid itself, and there's white and black uh, on each side there. And if they're switched on, they will pass the vacuum, go out, and then it'll go to the appropriate side of this diaphragm actuator here. It's a vacuum side, uh, a sealed side, and a vacuum sealed side. And what you need to realize is only one of these solenoids is going to be on at a time. So if you apply vacuum to this side, it's going to suck the diaphragm and that pintle this way. 
Same thing with over here, it's gonna suck it this way. Now as you'll see on the actual vehicle, this is actually reversed. When the pintle is going this way, we're going into four wheel drive, and when it's going this way, we're going to two wheel drive. But this does illustrate it very well as far as showing you the different sides of the diaphragm here and how it uses vacuum on this side to pull it this way and vacuum on this side to pull it this way. So that's basically how the system works. It's very simple. There's a couple more solenoids than the new vehicles and an external actuator and stuff like that. But it's not too bad as long as you have a diagram like this and you can really look at it and go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh yeah, and you, you can really tell what should be going on. Now, we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at all these same wires and vacuum lines in the engine compartment and under the vehicle, and I'm going to show you exactly how they should look and the values you, you should get depending on your switch position, two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. Okay, so over here in the engine compartment, the passenger side is your battery, and then here's the firewall, and right here next to it is your solenoids that control that front axle engagement unit. Here's your two-wheel drive solenoid, and here's your four-wheel drive solenoid. Both of these should have that constant power coming to them as long as the key is on, as shown in the diagram, and they should have a switch ground coming from that gem module uh, to power them up when they are... Uh, they are needed depending on the switch position inside. So first thing we're going to do, and like I said key on already, is we're going to take these off and you literally just push down on them and then pull. Same thing, push down the tab and pull. And then we're going to test each one of these for our constant power coming to them to make sure the solenite can actually work. So we're going to have our test light over here on the uh, negative battery terminal and then we're going to test each one of these for that constant power. And it should be the right hand terminal as the face of the connector is, is uh, facing you. And the reason why I use a test light is so it puts some kind of load on the actual circuit and pulls some amperage. This is a non-power test light I'm using that uh, has an incandescent bulb inside of it. Same thing on this one, we'll check for the, the power coming to it, and we have power, so we have our constant power coming to each one of these. Now the other terminal on here is to actually, is a switch ground coming from the gem module that actually turns on the solenoid. Okay, so with the truck and two wheel drive, key on, engine off, we're going to change our uh, test light over to the positive battery cable. And then, since this one came from this one right here, the two-wheel drive solenoid, we should be getting a ground right now. Put that in there. And you can see on our test light we are. And what you can do just to verify you don't have a short to ground is actually go back into the truck and turn the key off. And you'll see that the, the, there should be no more ground coming to it. And also, when you go to 4x4 mode, this ground will also be lost and it'll be over here now. So we're going to go over to this one. This is our 4x4 connector for this solenoid. And then same thing, left hand side. We're going to put that in there and you can see it's not powering up. There's no ground coming to it. So I'm going to walk around the truck and I'm going to go put it on four wheel drive and that light should come out for us. And as you can see, we're getting our ground coming from the gem module. So on both these solenoids here, we're getting that constant power and we're getting that uh, ground to actually control them. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is get these wires out of the way. They're not an issue. The module so far is not an issue. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna test the actual resistance of the solenoid inside of these and I'll give you my uh, reference values here. You can see them over here. Uh, these are both working just fine on this truck, so these are good known values. And we're just gonna go in here and test the two terminals inside of here. Let me get it in there. Of course, these are touching.
I don't like that. So we're going to put them in like this. Spread them. So we got 73.4 ohms on this one, and it should be the same for this one, I believe. I believe they're both the same solenoid, just doing different work. So anything in the, the 70 range, I'm sure the range, actual range in the manuals, anything from 60 to 80, and you'll know you have a, a, a solenoid resistance in there, and it's not an open circuit. All right, so vacuum testing on here is very easy also. All you need is your finger and a little bit of common sense, and we can go through this without a vacuum gauge tool. What happens is the actual vacuum from the engine comes over to a reservoir, which is actually behind the battery here, and those like to have problems with cracking and stuff like that from the batteries, and uh, they'll have a uh, loss of vacuum issues there, which affects all systems that are, are run by vacuum. So if you're having a problem with vacuum to these, look for your line that actually feeds it, and the reservoir behind the battery here that for, for cracks and breaks in the line. So what, what we're going to do is we're going to go through each one of these lines on here step by step and I'll show you what uh, is needed for vacuum and outputs on here. So, okay, so the vacuum supply to these solenoids is white on this side, it's the bottom line, and then it's black right here you can see on this side and those should have vacuum anytime the engine's running. So it's very simple, you come over here with these connect disconnected so you can get access, and you pull them off, they just slide right off, and you'll be able to stick your finger on here. It should stick on there and you know have suction to it as you're trying to pull it off. Same thing with this side, that bottom uh, port on there. If the, those both pass, then we're gonna go back over here and we're gonna connect just the bottom port on each one of these, just the bottom. Okay, it's a little hard to get in there. And I'll show you a close up of this in a second. You're basically connecting that vacuum line, that bottom vacuum line just tested, putting it back on there in its original port, but we're leaving the top one off. You can see it right there. Let's see if you can see it. Maybe I'll see it, yeah. Right there, that's the top port, that's the output to the front engagement unit actuator. So we got our vacuum going into the solenoid. Now we're going to reconnect our electrical connectors and put in two-wheel drive. And we should have vacuum coming out of here. And then we're going to switch it over to four-wheel drive. And we should have vacuum coming out of here in this top port. And the same thing, put your finger over it and you'll be able to tell just by the suction of it. You might, you'll probably be able to hear it over the engine too. Um, and you'll be able to test and make sure that solenoid is working fine and being commanded correctly. Okay, so at this point we're going to reconnect all these lines back on here just the way they were when you first started working on this. Everything back together, all your connectors back together and then we're going to go underneath and we're going to check that actuator on the front engagement unit to make sure that that's working properly and getting vacuum, etc. Okay, so hopefully you can hear me. Um, I got the engine running, it's in 4x4 four four right now, so this line right here, there's two lines, they stick right into here, this one right here should not have no vacuum, this one right here should have vacuum, so I'm going to put it back on there, and then we're going to see this actuator right here move in, and that's how you know that it's all working as far as the vacuum diaphragm, the pin, and the actual lever right here. Besides that, it's all internal and that doesn't really fail. So I'm going to back it back on. You can see how it sucked it over. It moves that collar inside of there. Let it off and it comes out a little bit. And then we put in two-wheel drive. This one right here should have vacuum. That's going to finish uh, pulling it this way and really make sure it's disengaged. As a final check, you put the vehicle off the ground, at least the front end, engine running, in park, park and brake applied, 
truck on jack stands off the ground two-wheel drive we're spinning these nothing else is moving the front drive shafts not moving the other half shafts not moving nothing that's the way it should be okay I just put in a four-wheel drive and now you're gonna watch that locking pin pop all the way over once the front uh, axle starts spinning by hand there it goes, it fully popped over, and that's how it should look when it's fully engaged. Now, our axle, I know it's blurry. We move the passenger side by hand. There we go. Spin the wheel by hand. Either one, and the other one will spin. Everything's all engaged. And then of course, since it's an open differential, the front drive shaft will not be spinning at this time until the transfer case is actually engaged and spinning with vehicle torque. But for right now, we know the front is locked together inside of here. All right, so I know this doesn't cover everything, but it, it covers the, uh, a big part of the system that actually fails on here. And if you need any more help as far as the switch thing is bad, the wiring thing is bad, I'd be happy to supply uh, diagrams for you and uh, help you along. But this will help with the, the electrical side and the vacuum side to get that front axle engaged together to accept the torque that's uh, being sent to it by the transfer case. Like I said, the transfer case, you'll know if that shift motor's working because it'll be that, <clears throat> that, little, that little noise and that, that bump you know, to it and it'd be from right underneath you. So hopefully this helps. And like I said, if you uh, have any more questions, just uh, put a comment down below and I'll be happy to help you with uh, your specific problem with the 4x4.